Hi guys! So today I am going to walk you through how I make my articulated wings for my costumes. These are pretty cost effective and easy to make, but I definitely recommend that if you're not familiar with some of these tools that you have someone assist you. I'll be using a heat gun, Dremel, lots of hot glue, and just, we're just gonna get into it. So here we go. To create the back plate, I use fiberglass, cloth, and resin. This stuff is very toxic, so I definitely recommend doing it outdoors or somewhere that is well ventilated, and make sure you wear the appropriate PPE. Before I begin, I pre-cut out all of my fiberglass cloth into little rectangles that I will then cover with the resin once we start. You can see that for this back plate that I am using my dress form. You can also use a person who's willing to lie still on the ground for you. Make sure you use a garbage bag to protect the subject or form you're using, as fiberglass resin is very sticky and will soak through any cloth. I generally do one layer, let it cure, and then go in and do a second layer when the first cure is hard. Next, it's time to create the PVC connector. For this, I cut a piece of one and a half inch PVC pipe about four inches long and put two 45 degree connectors on each end. Then I'm going to hot glue it to the back plate. It needs to be completely dry for this to work. Now that is temporarily attached, you're going to go in with more fiberglass cloth and cover the PVC, attaching it to the back plate so that it never comes off or moves again. It takes about 48 hours for fiberglass resin to cure. Once it finishes curing, I cut off all the extra cloth that went beyond my Sharpie outline, and then cut out a hole in the center of the PVC. This is what the fishing line will feed through, so it's important that we don't forget this step. For my wing harnesses, I like to use nylon cord and D-rings. That way, the shoulder straps are adjustable and can fit multiple body types. So I sew two D-rings to every strap. I like to make the cord about two feet long so I have plenty to work with. This can always be cut down later. To keep it from unraveling, use a lighter to melt the ends. To attach the cord to the harness, I use hot glue and glue it on with the D-rings facing up towards the shoulders. I then hot glue it in, in an X shape to help distribute the weight. Once the straps are attached, I then cover the plate in felt so that it's more comfortable to wear. This also helps keep the nylon in place. Be careful while gluing the top felt piece that you don't accidentally cut through your cord when trimming the edges. I leave enough felt around the edges to glue the top and bottom pieces together. Then cut out the felt that's covering the hole in the PVC. The back plate is officially done. For the wings themselves, we're first going to measure the shoulder portion around 10 inches long. These are the parts that connect directly to the back plate. Once you cut out two of these shoulder pieces, we're going to heat up the PVC to carefully bend them into a nice arch. This step is tedious and takes time. I always wear an oven mitt on the part that's holding the warmth of the PVC. With the main part of the wing, you're going to do the same exact thing. With the main part of the wing, you're going to do the exact same thing, measuring it out to the length you want, warming it up and bending it into the shape you want. Now you could do this twice, once for, once for each wing, or you could do it once and then carefully cut the PVC in half down the middle as I'm doing here. This way you know both sides will be even. Once the halves are separated, you're going to want to mark down four inches from the top where you're going to drill your attachment holes. On the shoulder pieces, you'll want to measure about one inch down. Once your holes are marked, go ahead and drill. Drill another small hole about half an inch from the end of the wing piece. This is where your fishing wire will start. Once you've made your holes, you can go ahead and connect them using a nut and bolt. I also like to put some washers between the two PVCs to create more space of movement. This is going to help once they're covered in feathers. Mark on the shoulders where you want your fishing wire to pull into the wing. This will determine how wide it will open. Now we can work on the fabric base. I like to use really cheap interfacing and just draw out the skeletal shape of the wings. I also go in and create the skeleton for the shoulders. 
You'll want to double the amount of fabric you cut so that you can sandwich the PVC inside the two slices. I then just hot glue the interfacing to the PVC and to itself. Now for the fishing wire. I believe this is a 30 pound wire, which is more force than we should ever need. We're going to fold it in half and thread it through the wire hole we made at the tip of the wing. Looping it on itself, we'll never have to worry about a knot coming undone. We're going to thread it through the hole we created in the shoulder piece and pull it through. We're going to test it to make sure it works. And once you're happy with it, we're going to continue fishing it all the way through into the back plate and pull it out the hole in the center that we made. Put both sides in and make sure you're happy with the test. Now for the feathers. You can use any material you want to make your feathers, or even use real feathers. I prefer craft foam because it's cheap and we need to make so many to cover up the front and back of these. I generally use four different sizes or so to do the different levels. With the biggest feathers on the bottom, I try to overlap them on the one edge to look a little bit more believable. How you place your feathers is up to you. I tend to fan mine out, so they're going to look their best when the harness is open wide as opposed to closed. Keep repeating with the second level. Whatever way you place the feathers on the first level, you'll want to continue to the second. And to the third. You can make more than three layers, but I tend to go crazy after three. This last level is important because you'll need to make sure you cover any exposed ends. Now repeat on the inside. Make sure you line up the bottom feathers in a nice full looking way. I like to fill in the gaps at the bottom. After doing both sides of the wings and the shoulder piece, it's important to test that it can still move all right. Sometimes this means not putting feathers directly around the hinge. When I feather my wings, I remove the fishing wire to make it a bit easier, but you'll need to stab a hole in the shoulders to feed it back through later on. Since I'm using craft foam that I'll be painting, I heat seal all the foam to help shrink the pores. To make them look a little less foamy, I'm going to use Plasti Dip to coat all the feathers. This will need to be done three to five times. Pick off any glue strings from hot gluing the feathers. I'm painting this pair black, so I'm using black Plasti Dip. It's also available in red, gray, and white that I know of. Gray is what I prefer to use if I'm going with any other color. Now that they've been sealed, I go in and use spray paint to make them black. You can go in by hand and definitely put a lot more creativity to the color if you'd like. Once they're painted, I put it all back together and test out the wings again. Now the tops are still a bit rough where the foam suddenly ends, so I'm going to go in and glue in a boa in the color I'm using. Now the edges are a lot better. And now for the end result. My favorite way to pull the wings open is to get a ring on each hand and tie the fishing wire to it so that as I spread my arms, the wings open. I've also seen a few people leave the strings floor length, crouch on the strings, and then as they stand, the wings open. It's all up to you. These can also still be broken down for storage since the wings can come off the back plate and the fishing wire re-threaded. Hope these helped. Make sure you comment any questions below and stay creatively you.